Now you asked about Airbnb. So let's talk about Airbnb. So as mentioned, you know, I, I bought, um, properties and a few of the properties, two of them, I decided in 2010, actually 2012 to rent on a short-term basis, rent them to travelers. And these properties were located in Southern California in a mountain resort area by the name of Big Bear, Big Bear Lake. And the results were really, really um, successful. The properties cash flowed better than the properties we had on long-term rental agreements. They cash flowed three to four times higher. Like you could rent, uh, we rent units here in Southern California, Orange County, which is um, probably more expensive to live in than the rest of the country. And I'm renewing a lease on one tenant. It's two thousand dollars for a one bedroom uh, unit. the The same property up in Big Bear Lake, probably similar in uh, capital outlay at the beginning, would do uh, five to six thousand dollars a month in cash flow. So it's just the returns were just so much better. And the number one driver of rentals for short term was Airbnb. The second place, you know, company was probably. It, it'd be between booking or VRBO or flip key. And they were playing for the remaining 15%. <laughs> Airbnb took 85% of our rentals, rental days. And they were just dominant. And that was not like, I wasn't the only one observing that. I was a member of other communities that did short-term stays. Airbnb was dominant. When we had the recession, because we did have a recession um, really around the, the 20. 20, uh, 2008, 2009, 2010 timeframe. And I invested big in real estate in 2010. That, at that time, real estate was really uh, uh, discounted. And I bought five properties and I did well with them. Um, but you heard stories about Airbnb, how uh, people that owned their own property and lost their job started renting rooms on Airbnb and they were able to generate enough cash flow where they, the, they were able to pay their mortgage, even have a, a a profit, and they really felt that you know going on Airbnb helped them save their property. They didn't have to go into foreclosure, and these were really positive stories. Now, where I'm going to is, if you, we have a recession, I actually believe Airbnb has a better business model than a Hilton, Marriott, hotel kind of hospitality kind of establishments because of that story I just told you. The there's micro entrepreneurs all over the world that say, hey, like I was in Mexico City and I stayed in a neighborhood where uh, Inan Cortez, the guy who conquered the Aztecs, stayed in. And this neighborhood's like hundreds of years old. And I stayed in an Airbnb and they have like a property there. They have like three or four dwellings, like, you know, and, and the people were on Airbnb and they were telling me how great Airbnb was because they were able to cash flow far better. And these are like really humble, you know, just wonderful people. The we stayed in two units because collectively we stayed during COVID, right? When you can work anywhere, we stayed in Mexico City for a long time, and <clears throat> the families had been handed down these properties, like four generations ahead of them were the original builders of the property, and it was handed down to them. And these folks were all in on Airbnb. They just thought that this was like a, a new way to monetize their property. They had a good active relationship with the uh, travelers that were coming into their properties. They were able to create more experiences. Like uh, we stayed in one property, Mexico City. We wanted to go to the, the pyramids that are in outside of Mexico City. The actual host said, hey, I'll take you and I'll charge you X. And I think I paid him. I forgot how much, but it was a reasonable rate. I knew who he was. Bingo. There's an experience and Airbnb is getting into those experiences. So the long and the short of it is that Airbnb has somewhat disrupted and kind of broken the guardrails from travel and, and also rentals, right? Because historically, like if you're in a small town and I'm going to use a small town in the United States. Um, and let's say you're, you're in Bishop, California, Bishop, California is outside of Mammoth, California. It's a small town. There's like 5,000 people that live there. And I know that town because I've traveled through it and they have this wonderful bakery. It's a Danish bakery. And that place has zero hotels. They have a couple motels, but it's really hard. Like if they have any kind of event, how can you find a place to rent? Well, Airbnb immediately makes 
Bishop, California, more the ability to travel to that town and stay there has just increased because now you have those properties on Airbnb. Overall, I think Airbnb is going to be worth, you know, five times their current stock price over the next five to 10 years. This because their universe and their addressable market continues to expand. And you look at their addressable market, it's every owner of a property on earth that wants to put a room or a spare unit, a spare dwelling, a home, a vacation home on Airbnb. They're opening up properties as big and luxurious as like the Ferrari Museum will let you stay in a room where you have F1 cars in the room and it's like $5,000 a night. So I don't know who would rent it. I wouldn't. Um, and you have um, as simple as you can, you know, stay in a spare room, you know, in some small town for very little money. So I think Airbnb really has a great future. And I've been buying big into Airbnb since their stock price has been really sold off 25% over the last five years. Look at this stock here. So the market as a whole, I shared with you how I have some insight on the short-term rental industry. I operated two properties successfully, understand the economics of short-term rentals. That's the kind of information advantage that I like using in investments. When I have an information advantage and the market doesn't, the market in general is just looking at it saying, oh, travel is going to slow down, sell off Airbnb. That's a natural conclusion that the market can make. Well, what I'm seeing is a big discount on a company that's going to be worth a lot more in the future. So I will continue to buy shares. I own a lot of Airbnb. Super discretionary stock. I've invested $86,000 in the stock. I only have a 2% you know, uh, appreciation on it. At one point, I was at like 50, 60% but the market's really sold off. I continue to buy the stock because I think it's 59% discounted and it'll continue to be a big bet for me because I do feel that Airbnb has more than just a travel site. They have an economy that they've created of home sharing around the world. Their biggest growth markets are Asia and Latin America. So those are just great growth areas because like we, we visited Mexico and we want to get back to Mexico and go to a place called Merida which has uh, different types of pyramids and it's safe and it has all this natural uh, things that we want to go visit. And then we want to go to, of course, Peru and go to, to Machu Picchu. And we, we want to go to Colombia and we want to go to Chile. So there's a lot of places in Latin America that we want to go to. The Airbnb brand, we're very comfortable with. So when we go down there, we're going to use Airbnb. And I want to go to Asia. I've never been. I want to go to Japan and Thailand and China and all these awesome places to visit on earth. So